Oil Blending webinar on the topic of mastering the art, and it is an art of oil blending. I think third time lucky this evening because we've had a couple of, you know, connection issues getting live. So hopefully you can all see us and hear us. We're really excited to be bringing you this webinar tonight. So if you could let us know in the chat if you can see us and hear us okay, hopefully you can now. My name is Anna Green. I am the Education Manager at Formula Botanica, and I have the absolute privilege of leading the education team, and I'm joined by two members of the team this evening. As I've said before, this webinar is on the topic of mastering the art, and it really is an art of oil blending. So we will be talking about different types of oil blends. And before we get started with the amazing content that we have for you this evening, I just want to introduce my team members. I'm really, really pleased to be joined by two members of the team tonight. So if we could start with Brooke, could you tell people a little bit about yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Brooke Medhurst and I'm the formulation tutor here at Formula Botanica. So I work as part of our fantastic education team where we grade our students' projects. We, I work as part of getting all of the content out to our blog and to the live as well, the lab as well. And I was a student once upon a time as well. I went through our International Skincare Entrepreneur Programme. So I remember the days of being right at the very beginning of learning to blend oils together and it can be a little bit daunting so hopefully we can take you through some of the basics and get you excited about blending your oils yes thank you so much brooke and yes we are very very excited about this topic so on to you therese if you could tell people a little bit about yourself yes i'm therese tool I started exactly where you are on a webinar and then became a student with Formula Botanica. And a little less than a year ago, I started with the education um, or the as a grading tutor. So I get to see many of the student projects come through. I get to answer questions for our students out in the forum and have a lot of um, direct contact with our students. That's very exciting. Yes, absolutely. We have an amazing team here at Formula Botanica, and I am really, really privileged to lead the education team. So as well as being education manager at Formula Botanica, I've been working in the natural beauty industry for over 10 years now. So it really is a passion of mine. And this topic, which is oil blending, is one that inspires passion in our students, it's one that our students love. Our students love creating oil blends and we love teaching it, which is why tonight we are bringing you this topic, especially we don't usually bring you topics that we also teach in the courses. So this is, you know, you're privileged with this information this evening. We thought we would share a little bit about what we do and how we teach our students. And this is a skill that, it's really fun, it can be really easy, but you need a few key pieces of information. And that's where we come in because people can get oil blends really wrong if they don't have those key pieces of information. So we're going to be sharing some insider tips this evening that will help you master oil blends, either for yourself, friends and family, or for a brand if that is what you also want to do. So we are very, very excited to teach this this evening. Um, I can see lots of comments coming in and people joining us from all around the world. I can see people saying hello from Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Idaho in the USA, Portugal. Amazing. We have an international community of students here at Formula Botanica. And we currently have over 18,000 students in 100 and 84 countries, which is incredible. So we absolutely love the teaching formulation. We are the leading online organic formulation school. So we are really the place to be if you want to be working with natural and organic ingredients. So this evening we have an amazing topic, which is oil blending. And we are gonna talk you through some of the key principles. As I've already said, my team, the students love this topic. It's really easy and it's really fun, but you do need some key information to make sure that you get it right. And I've seen lots of people get it wrong over the years. So I'm gonna be giving you some insider tips that I've seen 
as well as we go through. And of course, I have my team members here who are going to give you all their best formulation tips as well. We do have some amazing formulations to talk to you about, and those will be coming towards the end of the webinar as well. So do stay tuned to the end. And congratulations to everybody that is on live here because you are action takers. You want to learn a new skill. You want to improve an existing skill, maybe. And this webinar is going to be absolutely packed with value. So please do make sure that you stick with us. So yes, we are going to be sharing some really nice formulations. We have an African inspired face oil to share with you and we will share the reasoning for why it's formulated the way that it is. And we also have a golden lip oil, which is an absolutely beautiful formula as well for you to try. And just to let you know that as we are a school, we are the world leading online organic formulation school. We open enrollment in two weeks time. And my team are busy all year round grading students coursework, teaching students, and we are excited to have more of you join us as well. So we want to know before we get started, do you think you could make an oil blend? Do you think you could learn another formulation? We want to know in the comments whether or not you think you could master this skill and we are going to get started with some teaching. Okay. So. Thank you everybody for your comments in the chat. Hopefully you can still see and hear us. I think everyone can see us, which is good. Yes. There we go. Perfect. So hopefully you can see these slides. So as I've said already, this is about mastering the art of oil blending. And I think people see oil blending as something that they want to master, but they don't always get right. So we are going to give you a helping hand this evening to get your formulations right. And I know both my team members here are very passionate about oil blending, which is great. Oil blends are definitely one of my favorite formulations. So they're really amazing products. We're going to be talking about why oil blending is one of the best skills for beginner formulators. the key principles and secrets of successful oil blending. And we're gonna teach you about the amazing world of botanical oils for oil blending and about some of the potent ingredients that can be added to oil blends to supercharge their efficacy. So we have a packed schedule for you this evening. So, we teach formulation at uh, Formula Botanica, and it is fun, easy, and empowering, and we want you to learn this skill too. So we're gonna talk a little bit about why we're teaching you oil blends, because there's all sorts of different formulation skills that you can learn, and oil blending, is a key one, I would say, because a lot of natural and organic ingredients are in fact oil based. And there's a host of reasons why oil blending is really, really important. So I'm going to hand over to my team and let them explain a little bit about why as a skill, oil blending is a great one for you to start with. So oil blends in particular, as I've said, are one of my favorite things to make. And this is partially because they are really amazing products, but also because they are so, so easy. So you don't need any heat when you're formulating an oil blend. You can make them completely cold. You don't need a hot plate. You don't need a water bath. And they're really, really fast to make as well. So sometimes when you're making more complicated formulations, you need a lot more tools. You need a lot more time to be able to make it and it's much more labor intensive. But with oil blends, you can make some really amazing products very quickly and very easily as well. 
botanical oils have a really lovely natural affinity with the skin and there's lots of different benefits you can get out of them. They are really, really easy to customise depending on what kind of skin you have, depending on what you want your oil to do. You might want a really high performance oil based serum or you might want a simple facial oil that you can use to cleanse your skin with. There's lots of different things you can do. Oil blends are usually made with 100% botanical ingredients, so we don't need any ingredients that are not botanicals as part of an oil blend. You don't need any extra elements such as emulsifiers or preservatives to keep them stable. There's no need for preservation because it's all oil based. And just in general, people love oil blends. They are a wonderful product to use in terms of their sensory appeal. They're, they feel fantastic on the skin and very, very luxurious as well. Yes, absolutely. And just to come back, because my comments have popped back now, Brooke, I lost them for a minute <laughs> or two. Um, the tech gremlins are not on my side tonight. But uh, the question we asked about whether people uh, think that they could master the art of oil blending we have lots and lots of yeses. So well done to everybody who's saying yes. You are definitely the action takers and you are going to have a great evening with us tonight as well because we are sure that you are going to learn something that you can put into place in your formulations straight away, which is absolutely fantastic. Lots and lots of really great comments and people excited to learn something new so that is great um people do absolutely love oil blends and i think there is something really special about a well-crafted oil blend and an oil blend that has a lot of thought and care put into it and that is why they are so exciting because as brooks already said there is no heating required they can be quick to make and botanical oils do have a beautiful affinity with the skin. So they really are a fantastic formulation to make. Did you have anything to add in there, Therese? Uh, no, I'm excited to dive right into these oil blends. Good. OK, let's move on to the next slide. So one of the reasons why people love Oil blends is, as Brooke said, from a formulation standpoint, they have so many benefits, but also from a use perspective, you can make so many different types of products with botanical oils and sort of different ingredients. So you can make high end serums, you can make body oils, you can make lip oils, you can make cleansing oils, and you can make fantastic multitasking products as well, which is absolutely fantastic from a sustainability point of view, because you can have one product that might have more than one function. So they are really, really fantastic products to make. And they have a multitude of benefits as well for the skin, which is fantastic. Sorry. Before we jump into the formulating skills, yeah. I would love to know over in the comments, if you guys have any questions that are popping into your mind so far about formulating or the school, what we teach, how we teach it. Um, things like that. I would love to see your questions over in the um, chat area. Yes. And we are going to jump into talking about the formulation skills of oil blending. Now, it is one of the more simple things to start with, uh, but there still is um, a skill and a way to go about it. And we're going to teach you that. We're going to teach you how to research your ingredients. We're going to teach you how to design the formula. Um, formulation design is actually, it's, it's a part I love. I love to sit down and research and study and see how this blend comes together in harmony. And then we're going to teach you how to formulate safely. That's something that we all want to do. And I, I, I feel like personally, there's maybe not enough emphasis put on the safety of the products. So we're going to teach you a little bit about that as well. Yes. And just to reiterate, Therese, I think what you're saying is a great point there. At Formula Botanica, we don't pe teach people to be recipe followers. We don't just give you a sort of a recipe or a formula and tell you to follow that. 
our courses are structured around these materials that we're showing you. So we show people specifically how to create their own products, their own formulations from scratch and the things that you need to take into account. So how to design your formula, this is part of something that we would usually teach in our courses. And we do teach in our diploma in organic skincare formulation, for example. And it's such a key part of studying with us mm -hmm. because so many other places you will go to study and you won't be given the rationale behind how to put your own formulation together. You will simply be given formulas or recipes to follow, but you won't be given the why or the how. So this is really important that you think about this, because as I said, oil blends are absolutely incredible. I must have tested in my years in the natural beauty industry, probably hundreds, if not thousands of oil blends. And there are a few key things that people can get wrong. And even though there is a simplicity to putting this together, it's super fun with the insider knowledge that we're going to give you, you can avoid some of the pitfalls that I've seen many, many people fall into over the years of not putting together a well-rounded blend. So I'm very excited for us to share some more information with you. So we're gonna start talking about researching your ingredients. First of all, this is a really, really key thing for you to learn. It's a key part of our courses because when you understand your ingredients as a natural formulator, you can really, you know, understand the, the quality of what you are creating. Your ingredients are such a key part of your formula. So handing back over to you, Brooke and Therese. Absolutely. Researching your ingredients is a really, really vital part of creating a good oil blend because it is the element that is going to make or break your blend slightly. So I can see a lot of questions coming past about which oils you would need to select for your skin. And this is where your research comes into play. So you want to be understanding the properties of the botanical oils that you're choosing. Different scent oils have different properties. They will be good for different kinds of skin and they will do different things within your product as well. So knowing, to putting in the research and knowing what these elements are is going to be really important when you're designing your product, which we are going to cover in depth a lot more in this webinar. Another element is testing each ingredient individually to see if they are safe to use first. So this means that you might have a um, ingredient that won't work in a particular product. It might not work in a particular blend that you're using. You might have an essential oil, for example, that doesn't work in a particular blend you want to use at the percentages you need it. This is where things such as dermal limits come in, which we're going to cover in depth more later. Another thing to make sure you're keeping in mind is the compatibility of your ingredients. So not all ingredients are compatible. Sometimes they might be a little bit, um, they might clash with each other a little bit sometimes. It doesn't happen that often with oil blends, but there are a few things that you might come across. And it's just important to make sure that you're keeping an eye on that and checking to see if your ingredients are compatible. Yes, absolutely. And this is one of the first steps we teach you when you enroll in our diploma in organic skincare formulation. It's one of the key formulation skills that you start with because once you master oil blending, there is a host of other formulas that you can then work towards as well you can um you know try emulsions and you know serums and all sorts of other things as well so i've seen some comments coming through about what do you teach in the courses we teach many many different types of formulas oil blending is just one skill and this one skill can teach you how to create a variety and a wealth of different formulations as well which is absolutely fantastic I'm just going to bring us all back on screen. There we go. And just sort of uh, go through and have a quick check of the comments and make sure that everybody is following along and, you know, everybody is still with us so far this evening. 
we are having an amazing time teaching you around uh, the topic of mastering oil blends. We are going to go back to the slideshow in a second, but I would like to know if you think you could formulate something at home that you would enjoy using. So something that you could be proud of. Think about that and let us know in the comments what you think you could formulate at home. Would it be an oil blend or would it be something entirely different? What do you think you could make at home that you would be proud to use, maybe proud to share with friends and family? Are you currently making any skincare at the moment? Please do let us know. That would be great. So we are going to go back to... Aha, we are back. Great. Um, here we go. So we have talked to you a little bit about how to research your ingredients and, you know, thinking about your ingredient compatibility and all of those things. Let's move on a little bit to the properties of oils. And I think Brooks already hinted at the fact that oils, botanical oils themselves are a passion of many natural formulators. And there's a good reason for that, I feel, because they have an amazing natural affinity for the skin, but also the sheer variety of natural botanical oils that you can work with when you are studying our courses and when you are enjoying organic formulation is absolutely vast. It is an incredible amount of formulas that you can work with. So we are very, very excited to talk to you a little bit about the properties of oil. So I'll hand back to you, Brooke and Therese. So I've seen All a right. couple. Oh, sorry. I've seen a couple <laughs> of comments fly flash past about fatty acid profiles. And those of you that have picked up on that, you are really, really clever because that is one of the things we do want to look for when we're talking about oil blends. So for those of you that haven't heard of the term fatty acids before, fatty acids are the elements that make up our oils. There's lots of different kinds of fatty acids. We have essential fatty acids, non-essential fatty acids, unsaturated fatty acids, saturated fatty acids, and lots and lots of different terms. And these, there are many, many different kinds of fatty acids as well. We have palmitic acid, oleic acids, tauric acid, linoleic acid, and linolenic acid. These are all different fatty acids, and these different elements provide many different properties to your oil blend. So depending on which oils you choose, you can then customize what it is you want your blend to do. So for example, saturated acids are, can be a lot more stable because they have what's called single carbon bonds and this means that they are less prone to oxidation whereas by comparison something like a an unsaturated fatty acid uses double bonds so i know that sounds quite sciencey but it's giving you a good bit of an idea of what it is we're looking for when we're reading fatty acid profiles and essentially what it means is there are different elements that we look for when we do our oils and it this translates into things such as how light the oil feels on the skin how stable is it going to be long term is it better for people with dry skin or is it better for people with oily skin is it going to be a bit like castor oil where it's thick and goopy and very very good for cleansing or is it going to be like grapeseed oil where it's lovely and light and soft and is really good for a body oil or a massage oil so these are the different things you want to look for as part of the properties that your oils have. And that fatty acid is, profile is going to determine these properties. By getting familiar with these, it's going to mean that you can choose which oils work best for what it is you want your products to do. And this is something we cover a lot more in depth in our courses. We have a whole guide on carrier oils that's dedicated purely to oils and their different profiles. But just to give you a quick idea, things such as um, grapeseed oil, almond oil, you have lovely fancy ones such as pomegranate oil. There's lots and lots of different oils you can work with. Another thing, important element to think of when you're formulating with oils is their heat sensitivity. Now, not all plant oils are heat sensitive. Some of them are more heat sensitive than others. It's worked out on a scale essentially so some are far more heat sensitive than others 
And this is calculated through what's called their iodine value. Now we do have a whole blog post on this on our blog that goes into a lot more depth, but this is a really important thing to think about when you're using oils, because if you use oils that are heat sensitive and you heat them for whatever reason, then you're not going to get the same level of benefits out of them. This is why oil blendings are so fantastic when we can do them cold because we can use much more sensitive plant oils, things that, that won't necessarily work quite so well if they've been heated and we can use them to create some really fantastic serums. Another key point to think about is whether the oils are refined or unrefined. So this is essentially telling, talking a bit about the process of how this oil came to be. You can have things such as cold pressed plant oils, which you will, is essentially where they've been created by cold pressing the seeds or the nuts of the fruit, whatever it is that your oil is made from. This has been cold pressed and mechanically extracted. There are other ways of processing oils that are used with solvents and it will depend entirely on the oil that you're using and the oil that you're researching, which depends on what method they use. And then oils can also be refined as well. So if you have pure cold pressed oils, these are purely as they have been expressed from the plant or the nut or the seed of whatever they've been taken from. Whereas refined oils go through a little bit of sort of technical, chemical and mechanical refining in order to maybe take out some elements. So this could mean that you are taking out some of the scent, you're taking out some of the color, which on the flip side does mean that you're taking out some of its benefits and properties, but depending on what it is you want to make depends on whether or not refined or unrefined oils will be better for you in the formulation that you're making. So there's lots of different things to consider when we're talking about oils and it is quite a big topic. They're really, really fascinating to look into, but for uh, products that can be so simple to make, there is a lot of different things to think about, but they are really, really fun. And the research is really enjoyable to do as well. Yes, absolutely. Researching your ingredients is a lot of fun. And as Brooke said, different oils can undergo different levels of processing. At Formula Botanica, we try and encourage students to go with ingredients that have been processed as little as possible. But there is a whole spectrum of natural ingredients that, you know, from minimal processing, to things that maybe have undergone a lot more processing like emulsifiers, depending on the type of products that you want to create. I think one of the reasons our students and our community absolutely love oil blends is because you get to use botanical ingredients. You can use 100% botanical ingredients for oil blends, whereas you can't always do that for other formulations. For oil blends, you can have 100% botanicals and it is a very sort of pure product that has lots and lots of botanical benefits for the skin or for the hair, depending on the type of formula that you're creating. So they really are very, very beautiful indeed. So the next part is around formulation design, which as we've already said, this is one of the key things that you need to think about. And you need to keep in mind the type of formula that you're designing, but also who are you designing that formula for? So this is a question I've asked many different brand owners over the years when I've tested their products and their serums and their oils. And sometimes they can't tell you who their formulation is designed for, or they just create a formula that is designed for everybody. I think with oil blends, it's really important that we really tailor the formula and we really think about that design. So just a little tip there for you. And when you're designing your formula, there is, again, a few different things that you want to think about. And as Anna said, that it's really important to make sure that you know who you're designing your formulation for, because this is going to determine the best ingredients for you to use. So things like you might want to think about the absorption rate of your oils. This will essentially determine how fast your oil soaks into the skin. So if you're making a oil to be used in massage, for example, you might want it to stay on the skin a little bit longer, just so that gives you the slip that you want in order to make it stay on the skin for longer periods of time. 
But if you want an oil that absorbs much faster into the skin and maybe leaves you with just that light sort of glowy feeling of a light sheen, then you want to have much lighter absorbing oils and you can go all the way to the level of where your oils almost fully absorb into the skin. This is really, really easy to customize depending on the different ratios of oils you use. So you can use a nice blend of oils that um, absorb much slower and oils that absorb much faster. And there's no sort of calculation for you to be able to do this. It's something you have to do, unfortunately, with trial and error. So you have to just sort of decide what sort of ratios you want to use and you will essentially just by using it on your skin determine what kind of ratios it is that you, works for the product that you want to create. Different oils will always perform differently so, and part of being a formulator is learning to understand your ingredients that you're working with and this comes down to just testing things, it comes down to just being able to make a blend, trying different ratios and applying it to the skin and seeing how you like that and if that works for what you're trying to make. And then another element that brings in a whole world of excitement when it comes to oil blends is your botanical extracts. And there are lots and lots of different ways you can add these in. So this, you can use things like macerated oils, which is where you've taken some sort of plant, whether it's a flower such as lavender or chamomile, or maybe even carrots or just um, leaves, things like that. There's lots of different things you can use and you have infused them into a base oil. This is a process called maceration, and it's essentially just a bit like tea, making tea as you would with an infusion, but it's with oils instead. So it's a little bit more complex, but it's really fun to do. And if you have lots and lots of plants out in your garden, it's definitely a fun exercise to try. We do have a blog post over on our blog that's dedicated completely to uh, making oil macerate so that might be something that you're interested in then go and have a look at that as well. Another element that's slightly less labour intensive when it comes to extracts is CO2 extracts and these are extracts that you can buy and they've been created for you and they are used or created making using CO2 extraction which is a slightly different process. These are not the same as essential oils and they're not the same as macerated oils they are their own kind of extract but they're really, really potent plant-based extracts and they are absolutely fantastic. They give you lots of lovely benefits to your products. They can give you some lovely colors, some lovely scents, and they're really, really fun to work with. You also have the option of essential oils, but that is something we're gonna cover a bit more in depth later on in the webinar, but they are fantastic as well. That will be what will give you your scent and possibly even some different, um, aromatherapy benefits from the perspective of you've got different blends you can make in terms of fragrance so you can have something that's fresh you can have something that's floral you can have it maybe spicy by playing around with the different oils you use and the way they interact with the base oils as well can alter the um, feeling you get out of your product so I can see a lot of people asking a little bit about vitamin E and yes, absolutely vitamin E is something you would always use in an oil-based product because it is what's called an antioxidant. And this is something that you need because you want to stop your oils from oxidizing. This is your unsaturated oils, your polyunsaturated oils, they are much more prone to oxidation. And this is something that you want to try and prevent by using an antioxidant such as either vitamin E or rosemary CO2 extract. Yeah, so it will slow down the rate at which your oils become rancid. If you've ever oh, smelt a rancid oil blend, it is particularly unpleasant. And I have seen mm -hmm. many, many people make this mistake over the years where they don't have an antioxidant in their formula they might have oils in their formula that are particularly sensitive because some are more prone to oxidation and rancidity than others. And it is about slowing down that rate of, uh, you know, your oils essentially becoming bad because you want a decent, you know, shelf life for your oil blend. You don't want it to, you don't want to create it and it be sort of, um, you know, smelling unpleasant within a month, which I have seen happen to some people. So it's just really important that you think about that in terms of 
your oil blends. We've said at the beginning that you, for most oil blends, you wouldn't need a preservative. And some people have asked about some of the botanical extracts, the macerates, etc. if that means that you do need a preservative in there. If you're using something like a macerate, which is an oil-based um, you know, uh, ingredient, then you don't need to add a preservative, but you will need to think about that uh, antioxidant activity, as Brooke has said, because that is really key for your shelf life and just making sure that your product is pleasant to use because if something smells unpleasant, people aren't going to want to put it on their face or their body. So really, really important to think about that as well. I just saw someone's comment that says smells like bad crayons. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what they smell like. Yes, mm -hmm. it's very, very yes. unpleasant. Some of the oils are more unpleasant than others, I have to say but it is very noticeable when something um, isn't quite right. So definitely something for you to think about. Shall I move on? I One thing I wanna add here, if you don't mind, is where it says testing the different ratios of oils. I would encourage you all to take uh, some of your favorite oils that you have on hand and maybe even just start applying little, um, little strips of the oil to your arm and pay attention to how does it glide on? How quickly does it absorb? What does it feel like? What does that oil smell like? And start making notes of those things first, because that is going to be really valuable when you start blending later and you decide, do I want it to absorb really quick? Do I want it to be on the surface a little bit more and provide a little more occlusive um, protection? So that is just a great, um, a great way to really get familiar with your products. Yes. Absolutely. Definitely. It's a really fun experiment to do as well, to be able to try different oils and see how they work. I know I have a book um, in my sort of lab setup where I have a notebook where I've written down the different characteristics of the different oils that I like, my different favorite oils and what they're good for, what kind of um, occlusive benefits they give and all that sort of things. And once you start doing it with a couple of oils, it gets really addicting and then you start just wanting to try them and it's a lot of fun. It's the same way with making macerates too, isn't it? it you is. start blending some of your petals in with the oils and the colors and the scents that you can create are really amazing. So start playing around with some of those macerates too. Very easy to do. Put your, your um, plant material in and let it sit and watch it. Just observe it. It's beautiful. You can make some really lovely colors with macerates as well. Yes. All right, should we move on to the next slide? I think so. Anna has the power to move them though. Ah, apologies. So, that's right. I was just talking to my children. It is the evening here in the UK, so I am juggling both, but we want to be here for you. So. We do what we can there. Okay, so we are moving on to formulation safety. This is really, really important to us at Formula Botanica. We are passionate about making sure that you can formulate safely, that all of our students understand how to formulate safely. And we've talked a little bit about antioxidants already, but I'd love the team just to talk you through the basics in terms of why when you're using essential oils in a oil blend there's an additional layer just for you to think about in terms of keeping people safe yes i will cover that for the essential oils um, essential oils have different sensitizers in them a very small per percentage of people are actually sensitive um, to it, maybe a limonene, linalool, geraniol, things like that. There's currently there are 26 um, that we are uh, asked to consider. Only 16 of those are present in essential oils. Uh, so you really need to know those because those who are sensitive to these um, sensitizers, uh, they know that and they're looking for it on the ingredient and they must buy, they must legally be declared. So the first thing is to identify the sensitizers that would be present in the essential oils. And secondly, you'll, we'll teach you, uh, in Formula Botanica, it's a whole course, we teach you how to calculate those sensitizers. 
And then third, you determine from that calculation that you got, do you need to declare it on, on your label? More importantly is there is so much information available um, on the web that is incorrect about essential oils. And a lot of people are using them without a lot of safety precaution in mind. And there are dermal limits for them. So we talked about that calculation of finding, is this sensitizer enough to where it needs to be listed on the label? But then there's also a limit where you cannot go above that. Um, it, would be, it would be dangerous and very uncomfortable to the skin. So there's also those dermal limits to consider with the essential oils. I would always recommend if you have not studied with a, a reputable school like Formula Botanica, if you um, haven't studied sort of a little bit more in depth about dermal limits, that at this stage in your journey, you there's oil blends, for example, on our blog and things that you can follow. And we have already calculated those dermal limits for you. So you are following somebody else's formulation before you get to the stage of designing your own if you are using essential oils. So it's just a small additional step in terms of learning, but there are a you know a wealth of different botanical oils that you can put together without needing to calculate dermal limits. So please don't be overwhelmed. Please don't sort of think it's too complicated. There is a little bit of additional learning. We go into a lot of depth in this in our courses, just because it's so, so important that you understand how to formulate safely and to really, you know, make something that's enjoyable as well from a fragrance perspective, for example, blending essential oils and, you know, different fragrance families together to making something that is enjoyable on the nose, you know, something that smells pleasant, but that perhaps isn't too strong. That is all sort of additional learning that we provide and offer as part of the courses as well. Just to go back to earlier on when we asked people, do they feel that they could create things? There was so much positivity from everybody on this webinar, giving a variety of different formulas that they want to try or they are already in the process of trying body scrubs, body oils, and oil for sensitive skin. I just love the positivity and enthusiasm that everybody is bringing to this topic because it means that everybody's gonna go away and have a go at the principles that they're learning today. So that is very, very exciting. Shall I move on to the next slide? I think so. Yeah. So this is just a bit of fun for everybody in the room and also for my team. Um, what is your favorite botanical oil? Is there an oil that you absolutely love to use? I have to say this is a little bit like picking a favorite child because there are so, so many, but I'm gonna throw this out to everybody in the comments. Please do comment in the chat and let us know what is your favorite oil and also, Brooke and Therese, I want to hear from you. What is your favorite botanical oil? I think that's possibly one of the hardest questions I've ever been asked. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, mine might be something as simple as I have a slight addiction to um, sweet almond oil. I love the feel. I love the smell. Mm. I'm just, and it's so simple. Every, you know, so many people have access to it too. So it's kind of a fun oil to, um, to have that addiction to. But I also love um, tamanu oil is another really nice oil that I've enjoyed playing with lately. I think sweet almond would be one of my all time favorites as well, because I actually bought when I was studying, when I sort of first started making lots and lots of oil blends I bought five liters of it. I use it for so many formulations. It's actually slightly scary but I think at the moment my favorite might be marula oil because I've been using that in a lot of different serums and I really love the skin feel of that but I think all-time favorite would have to be almond but current is definitely marula yes but there are all so of you can let us oils. know if you need to all of you can let us know if you need to join our support group for the sweet almond oil <laughs> addicts <laughs> that would definitely be a good group to have <laughs> <laughs> yes. People are loving this question because I am watching the like comments ping past and every time something new pings past, I go, yes, I love that too. So 
amazing <laughs> choices, everybody. I would have to say mine is prickly pear seed oil. I am a bit oh. of a cactus fan. And I absolutely love, um, you know, the fact that uh, some of these oils that are coming up on screen at the moment, like carrot, are also just fantastic, fantastic um, oils to use. So, yeah, I've seen passion fruit oil pop up, moringa oil, carrot, peach kernel, apricot kernel. I mean, it just goes to show how many beautiful, inspiring botanical ingredients we as organic formulators get to work with. I mean, I just think we are so, so lucky. So thank you everybody for your responses. That was just a bit of fun. Let's move on to the teaching because we have a lot to get through. And at this point, I want to jump in with some ingredient inspiration, some of the ingredients we've already talked about. And here's just some botanical oils that you could use. I know Brooks already mentioned jojoba oil, which is actually just an interesting fact for you, a liquid wax and not exactly sort of structurally the same as the other botanical oils, but on the skin, has a great affinity with the skin. It comes in a liquid format, so you don't need to worry about melting it like you would other waxes. So it is perfect for adding to oil blends. It's also very accessible. We have things like grapeseed as well. Again, very accessible, you know, inexpensive for the most part, almond oil that support group is coming back again um obviously you have to be aware of people who may have nut allergies but there really are so many different ingredients that you can choose from one that i think is a bit of a hero ingredient and it has that beautiful orange color which is actually from some of the compounds in the oil which are called carotenoids is rosehip oil and rosehip oil is a very very interesting oil indeed now rose hips are a very good source of vitamin c but um a very common myth that is propagated everywhere on the internet and we have debunked this one on our blog we have a blog post about this is that the oil itself rosehip oil will also be a good source of vitamin c unfortunately vitamin c is water soluble not oil soluble. So when you are thinking about choosing your ingredients and you are doing your research, it's really important that you do your research with trusted sources. We give our students a wealth of information on ingredients and a wealth of sources that they can use. Because as I said, there's a lot of topics like the fact that there is vitamin C in rosehip oil that are all over the internet, but are not true. We have debunked that one already. It is, uh, you know, not one that you can take on face value. Unfortunately, there are lots of amazing properties to rosehip oil, though. It is particularly good at softening the skin and smoothing the skin. And we don't really understand fully how the mechanism of action works from rosehip oil on the skin. But many, many natural formulators will use it instead of... Um, ingredients like uh, retinol, for example, because it has a nice smoothing effect. It's not a retinol alternative as such, but it does have a nice smoothing effect. And we're just gonna give you a little bit of ingredient inspiration here because we could go on for hours. <laughs> and I'm conscious of the fact that we have been talking for a while already. So I wanted just to mention a few really interesting ingredients that you can add to your oil blends. Botanical oils, are amazing in themselves, but you can also add in some very interesting ingredients that are oil soluble, that have fantastic benefits for the skin. You've got things like coenzyme Q10, which is often used in products sort of targeting mature skin. You've got Bacuchio, which is an extract based on the babchi plant. Now, Bacuchio has been everywhere for some time. It's an oil soluble ingredient that you could add to an oil blend. And even though it has different uh, properties to something like retinol, it is known to have very similar benefits for the skin. So it is good for um, pigmentation, for example. It's good for sort of fighting wrinkles if that's sort of the effect that you're looking for or preventing wrinkles and it's just a very good ingredient in terms of having efficacy 
on the skin. And it's these kind of, let me say, more high performance um, ingredients that can really sort of take your formulations and your oil blends up to a different level, depending on what you're trying to formulate and who you're formulating for. I personally love Bakuchil, it really suits my skin. So it's a good one. Another one is astaxanthin, and we have a whole entire blog post on this ingredient. And astaxanthin is actually an oleoresin. And you can see on the little photograph on the slide, it's very thick and it's very dark, but when it's added to a beautiful oil serum, it just gives this beautiful orangey color. Really, really stunning um, in its application. And vitamin E as well. We've obviously talked about vitamin E in terms of its antioxidant properties, helping to delay that rancidity of oils and helping to prevent your oils from going bad. But also vitamin E has great skin properties in itself. So really thinking about when you have an oil blend, I like to think of it as the sum of its parts will be the actual final blend will be more than the sum of its parts because you will have chosen your ingredients really carefully and they all have had a complementary action and just thinking researching these individual ingredients and thinking about where you want to go with it is really really important a few others coconut oil which can come in a solid or a liquid form kukui oil is one that i really like argan oil very very popular for hair care and uh, a formula botanica team favorite which we talked about the other day i think in one of our facebook groups was pecuri oil which is a really nice sort of interesting oil as well so i mean there are just so many choices when it comes to oil blends it is a fantastic um you know resource so next, we're going to get on to the bit that you're all very excited about. We're going to talk you through some formulations that have been created by my education team. And we're going to talk you through how they've been put together, the ingredients that they have to give you some inspiration. You can follow these formulas at home. But also, you can think about sort of the reasoning that we're giving you about how we put them together so that you can then, you know, uh, think a little bit about your design for your formulation that you're going to try. So handing over to the team again. Yes, this one again is an African inspired face oil. Now you could substitute other oils for some of these, but again, we're going with um, African inspired oils. So first one of course is an argon oil. And this is gonna have an average um, absorption rate, kind of an average to, to mid range absorption in the skin. It is higher in the vitamin E, antioxidants, essential fatty acids. And again, those essential fatty acids are fatty acids that your body does not make. You have to get them um, from an outside source. So it's great to find them and to be able to formulate with those oils that are high in those essential fatty acids. The second oil on here is the desert date oil. And that is, this one is very smooth. It is very quickly absorbed into the skin. It's non-greasy, uh, but yet it still kind of gives a protective layer to the skin. It's a little unique in that way. Um, high in your antioxidants, unsaturated fatty acids. Um, if you were looking for an alternative here, it's not African expired, but it is Anna's favorite oil. And that would be um, the prickly pear seed oil would be another um, substitute there if you're looking for one readily available. But again, that desert date, 72% of your omegas um, or of the oil is like the omegas six and nine. So a high concentration of those. The third oil at um, 15 um, grams in the oil uh, formulation here is the rice bran oil. That one has very little scent. <clears throat> It is, again, a mid-range absorption. So you can see that we have some mid-range absorption. We have some very quick absorption. So you're getting those carriers to bring some of the other um, elements that you might add, some of the other extracts or things like that, and bringing them as, into the skin as well as they can. But then you're also giving a little bit of that occlusive um, barrier protection too. 
so the rice bran, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, saturated fatty acids. Uh, it contains, uh, I'm going to butcher how you say this, but orzanol is um, present in that oil. And that is, it's high, a very, very high antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. So it's mixed um, sterols, and, sterols and ferulic acid, and it helps to combat free radicals, which free radicals are what are trying to cause damage within your skin to the cells, um, do cause the premature, premature aging and things like that. And the what we're adding here is called a free radical scavenger. It helps to neutralize that effect. So it's helping with that. And then also... Um, it is known too to help with some UV damage, um, repairing that. So another very beautiful ingredient. And then of course, you're going to have vitamin E at 0.3 grams. And that is going to provide that antioxidant for your formula. And then for the oil, we have chosen um, Frangipani Absolute. And it is from the Plumeria alba flowers. It is beautiful. It's, it's an intense aroma. Um, more, it's floral and spicy, yet somewhat fruity and sweet all at the same time. So try to imagine that one in your brain right now, putting together spicy, um, floral, and fruity. It, it's beautiful. Um, but as a topical, the purpose of it also is that it is uh, high in antioxidants and anti-inflammatory. So a beautiful oil. And I did make, I don't know if you can see it here on my screen. I'm going to try to get it, but I did just put this, uh, make this and put it in a dropper, but a fantastic, um, a fantastic oil. And this one, I would say I like to use a little bit on my face, but I like it for my arms. I love putting this on my arms and hands. My apologies. Yes, and the formulation. Just, the, the, um, the formulation on a slightly bigger screen. So I've removed us just for a minute. So I don't think they did see that. That's okay. Um, but a few people were saying that they couldn't see the slide. So I've made it as big as I can for the yes. most. And you'll see a total of 50 grams there for your formula. Yes. So we'll leave that up for a couple of seconds longer so people can take a look. But this is also available on the Formula Botanica blog for you as well. We're talking you through these formulas. So I'm just going to go back to all of us being on screen very quickly. So we can reset the slides and start again. So there we go. Okay, so moving on to the next formulation. Thank you so much, Therese, for that information. It's a really beautiful face oil for all of you to have a go at making. Let's move on to our next formulation inspiration, which is a beautiful golden lip oil, which was formulated by Brooke, and it was a mega hit on the blog. It was this particular product was a little bit of a labor of love. I went through quite a few iterations to get to this one. So I'm going to talk you a little bit through the formulation that I ended up with. So to start with, the biggest chunk of our formulation is going to be castor oil. This is a really good oil, especially for lip products, because it is a heavier oil. The idea behind this product, I've got one here to show you, is I want, was a little bit inspired by the different lip oils you can see coming through on the market a little bit. And the idea behind this was so that it would stick on the skin a little bit longer. So I wanted something that was a bit more occlusive. So I've gone for castor oil as my base because it is heavier and it gives me a lot more thickness as part of my formulation. And as I go through the ingredients a little bit more, you'll see there's a few different things in there that help with this. But castor oil is fantastic for softening the skin. It's got a really lovely, rich texture to it. And the next one, which part is part of what gives the oil its fantastic yellow colour, is golden jojoba oil. And this is, as we said earlier, jojoba oil is actually a liquid wax. And the other really fun thing about jojoba oil is it is actually the oil that is closest to our skin's sebum 
which means it is fantastic at moisturizing and giving and softening the skin. The skin on the lips especially is very thin and very delicate, so it does need more um, oils and occlusives in order to be able to protect it, especially in sort of the winter months and when it gets colder or if you lick your lips a lot, it can be, they are quite quick to get quite dry and chapped. And having an oil with some really good occlusives in it does help that. And the other element that helps the occlusivity, I'm sorry, I can't speak now, occlusivity of the oils is cerebellina. Now, cerebellina is a really fascinating ingredient, and I had a lot of fun with this one because it is essentially a modified form of beeswax. So they've tinkered with it slightly so that it's made of polyglycerol esters. And this changes the texture of the beeswax somewhat. It means that you have more um, almost ointmenty textured products rather than quite solid ones made with a solid wax. So that is the ingredient that gives us the texture for this particular lip oil. And I will, when we zoom out, I will show you the texture a little bit closer. You can't see the formulation on the screen. But that is what gives us the texture. And um, cerebellina in particular is a little bit harder to work with because you do have to add your oils gradually. But it is really fascinating and makes some really amazing textures as well. So we end up with a slightly sort of thin, it's thinner than a, it's not solid, it is still liquid, but it's much thicker than a liquid oil, which is really good, especially for the lip oil that we were trying, what we were trying to go for. The next product or the next um, oil that we have in the blend is raspberry seed oil. And this is one I really, really love. It is a lighter textured oil but it is fantastic in terms of it has lots and lots of different essential or lots of essential fatty acids in there. Sorry, I knocked my oil over there. It's got lots of essential fatty acids in there. So as Therese was explaining earlier, essential fatty acids are your omega-6s and your omega-9s. These are fatty acids that your body needs to build um, cell membranes. It needs them to build ceramides, which are all fantastic things for your skin, but your body cannot synthesize them by itself. So this means that you need to take them in either through your diet and the food you eat, or you can also, to an extent, apply them topically, which is one of the reasons we love raspberry seed oil. It has a lovely fresh scent to it, so I was adding that in as part of the formulation because as this was a lip product, I didn't want to add anything that was scented because you don't want it. Your lips are quite sensitive, so you don't really need the scent there. You can add different essential oils if you want to, but you, we would only recommend adding a little bit. And I decided that for this particular product, we didn't need to add it in there. But as I was talking about earlier, the uh, next ingredient is raspberry CO2 extract. And I've added this one because it compounds the essential fatty acids that we have those anti-inflammatory elements and it gives us a lot more of raspberries particular benefits because it is a much more concentrated form of raspberries oil and there's only one percent in there you don't need a lot of it they work do work in quite small amounts but it's really really lovely as an ingredient to give you an extra boost of benefits and then we have as our final ingredient, tocopherol. Now, you might not recognize that, but it is the same as vitamin E. Tocopherol is what's known as the inky name for vitamin E, which is, stands for your International Nomenclature of Cosmetic Ingredients. This is essentially the language of cosmetic ingredients. So you, as you can see in the middle column, we've listed all of the ingredients inky names, and this is what we mean. When you're looking for ingredients from suppliers, you can often find them much easier by looking at their inky name rather than their trade name. So that's another little bit of a tip for you. And I can see lots of different questions flooding in as well. So we might want to go through those, but. Thank you so much to everybody for sticking with us. I know my colleagues in the chat are putting up the links for the blog post where you can find these formulas. So you can go at the end of this webinar and you can go and look up the exact formula that we are showing you on screen. We're talking you through it now, but you don't have to know everything down. You can go to the blog later on 
and you can have a go at these. We know you are itching to get formulated, so do not worry. Also, for people asking about the replay, this will be available later on on YouTube as well. So we have a few more slides, and then you know we will be jumping through to questions so just to recap a little bit we've given you some formulation tips we've talked about researching your ingredients about testing and the importance of actually feeling some of the ingredients on your skin botanical oils are safe to sort of test on your skin directly we've talked about when you're working with essential oils please stay safe think about dermal limits. And most importantly, I think we have shown this evening that oil blending is lots and lots of fun. So it is fantastic. Just a word on our award-winning courses, because we teach all of this information on oil blending, and this is a special preview for you this evening, in our diploma in organic skincare formulation, we are the world's leading accredited online organic formulation school. And these are the courses that we have available on screen. You can get in contact with our amazing help desk team at any point if you want to know more information about the courses. And just to remind you, enrollment for all of our award-winning courses is open in two weeks time. So if you want to join us as a student, now is your opportunity. I just see that Audrey says I could geek out on oils and talk for days. Yes. Audrey, join us and let's do that. <laughs> yes. We're going to get to some uh, questions in a minute. Obviously, we are talking about our diploma in organic skincare formulation, which is where this information usually sits. And it is our foundation diploma. You learn the foundations of formulation, which is what we've been talking to you about. Especially important to learn formulation design. And it has launched the careers of over 15,000 students worldwide. You will gain an award-winning grounding in formulation before gaining more advanced knowledge. So that is a little bit about the diploma. We are going to be you can choose your courses, you can pre-enroll with Formula Botanica at the moment. So if you are um, keen to enroll with us, pre-enrollment is available at the moment. And you can start pre preparing to become a formulator, just like my team, just like Brooke and Therese. They started where you are at the moment. So term time enrollment opens on Thursday, July the 6th which we are very, very excited about. As I've already said, we currently have over 18,000 students and graduates in 184 countries. So you can join an amazing international community too. And we all um, love geeking out over oils. Yes, all of our students have that in common and the staff at Formula Botanica is that we all love botanical oils. And you can see some amazing examples of people here with their, uh, you know, students with their, their certificates. And we are so, so proud of our community of students and graduates. It really is a privilege to teach everybody. So on to the fun part, which is the Q&A. We have had many, many questions. So let's get stuck into answering some of these. Um, a big, big thank you, you know, to everybody who has taken part so far. It has been absolutely incredible. I've seen so many lovely comments popping through of those of you who are really enjoying learning with us this evening. So thank you so, so much. There really is a very big list to get through. Um, just before we start with the Q&A, uh, Therese and Brooke, can you share with everybody why you think they can formulate and why people should formulate. Absolutely. Yes, I think that everyone can. I think it is, that trend has grown, but it's it certainly has not reached a peak yet. You see a lot of people beginning to formulate their own products um, because they're not finding what they want on the market. They don't like the ingredients on the market, different things like that. So you can formulate and it's exciting to formulate for specifically what you need. When you know what you need, then it's exciting to also be able to take that and share it with somebody else who may have 
or share that same need. Um, but and I started formulating prior to Formula Botanica, and I stuck with mostly anhydrous products because I didn't I didn't know how to do anything else. When I began with Formula Botanica, it opened up an entirely new world. Now, don't get me wrong. I still love anhydrous products, but what, what I can do now, what I can accomplish, the ingredients that I can add, the blends that I can make is just beyond what I ever imagined. And there's an entire community that rather than being competitive, everyone is helpful. Everybody helps each other when you're stuck. We post it out in the online classroom or the Ask the Tutor forum. So even though it's an online, I was a little bit nervous about doing online and thought I'm going to be here by myself and I don't know what I don't know and am I going to get the answers? And that is a resounding yes. I have every had everything answered that I could have ever imagined and more. Yes. Absolutely. We have an amazing team who are here to support everybody in our community. Those of you who join us on Facebook and our Facebook groups and our student community, we value each and every one of you. I just wanted to show this comment here. Oh, maybe not that one. <laughs> there was one that's disappeared. We had it. Because they're flooding through so quickly, aren't they? We can get it through so quickly. Uh, lots of lovely comments coming through, by the way. Um, just really, really positive, positive comments coming through. Here we are. This is the one that I wanted. I wanted to share this one by Lindley. Always open to learning something new. Thanks for showing us how. We do hope that everybody is having a great time learning about this topic this evening because we absolutely love it. Let's have a little look at some more... Um, questions so denise has asked is it possible to make a stable and liquid oil blend with oils like coconut oil or babasu oil that tend to be solid depending on temperature so from my experience denise yes you can but it depends a little bit on the percentage that you use so if you're going to be using an oil such as coconut oil or babasu oil that tends to be solid at room temperature, you're going to want to make sure you're using a smaller amount of it. Otherwise, it's going to make all of the rest of your oils solid. The only hiccup you might come into is when you're cooling down your oil, you need to make sure that you're cooling it to a trace, which is going to make sure that your oils cool at an even speed and stay nice and blended. Otherwise, what you might end up with is having a slightly lumpy oil this is what causes graininess especially when you're using ingredients such as shea butter it, that little bit of graininess is caused by your um, different fatty acids separating out at different stages so they all have different melting points they have different points where they solidify and making sure that you cool them down to a trace is the best way of preventing that. So if you're gonna make a blend with coconut oil or basi oil that you want to stay completely liquid, make sure that you use a slightly le lower amount of um, your coconut oil and you use predominantly liquid oils to give you that fluid texture. And then as you're cooling them down, make sure you cool them slowly and all together because that will then give you the nice even texture that you're looking for. Yes, thank you so much. Brooke, I noticed that question was from Denise and Denise gave a comment earlier that she tried your lip oil formulation and loves it. I saw her comment come through. Yes, oh, that's great. I'm glad you like it. We also have a great question here. Is there a course focused entirely on oil blending? If yes, do we earn a certificate after completing the course? The course that includes all the information that you need to know, so the information that we shared this evening and then lots more information is the Diploma in Organic Skincare Formulation. And that is the course where Module two is entirely based around formulation design. And then in module three of that course is where you jump into your oil blending. So this course is the course that you need if you want to learn a lot more about oil blending. We also cover all the principles that you need to know around essential oils. So how to blend fragrances, 
how to calculate your dermal limit. So by the end of that course, you will be able to formulate an amazing oil blend, serum for the face, different oil blends, cleansers, that kind of thing. So this is the course that you need to cover all of those skills, all the things that we've talked about this evening. And then you learn how to make emulsions and body scrubs and you know, a variety of different products. It really is a very packed course and enrollment is open in two weeks time. So I will just reiterate that one because it's really important. I can see some of you like Teresa are itching to join us as students. So I can't wait to see you in our online classroom and in our community. Um, this one's an interesting question. How do we know which ingredients are compatible? So we've covered some of the principles already of formulation design, and it's really that ingredient research stage, um, Mary Lou, that you have to think about. So when we are teaching formulation, first of all, you need to think about what the formulation is designed to do, who your target audience is, because ingredients that are compatible for a cleanser, for example, are going to be very different to a leave-on oil serum. So you have all of those considerations as well. And then there is an element, as Brooke has already identified, of trial and error in the skin feel of different oils, you know, how those oils um, blend together in terms of scent, and you know, then your research in terms of skin properties as well. So there is quite a lot to think about. Do you have anything else to add in there, Teresa or Brooke? No, I think you've covered no. it really well. There's, as Anna said, there's lots of different elements you can look at as looking at things like the solubility of your ingredients, the percentages you need to use them for at, and P when you start using water in um, products, you can look into pH and everything as well. But there's lots and lots of different elements to that and it will vary depending on what ingredients you're using. So for oil blending, luckily there is a much smaller list of things you need to look for. And a huge chunk of that then comes down to the skin feel and the scent profile and things like that. But when you get into making slightly more complex products, it gets a little bit trickier and you need to make sure that you're putting your research into your ingredients that you're using. But we cover all of this in great detail in our diploma. So if there is something that you're looking at learning more about, then the diploma is absolutely the best place to start. Yes. If you have loved this webinar, then the diploma is the next step for you, I would say. Absolutely. Um, this one's an interesting one. Um, oil blends are formulated in grams, correct? I've been blending oils in milliliters, so this will be a new approach to measuring batches and formulas. We teach our students to formulate in grams, and hopefully my team can give you more information on why. So the simple answer is because it converts easier. So grams is the easiest way of converting percentage because they are very, very similar in terms of your, um, in terms of the amount. So milliliters is more of a volumetric measurement, which is harder to um, measure accurately with the sort of tools that we would use as a beginner. So you would need things such as beakers that are measured. They have lines on them, but they are not really as accurate as we would want them to be when you're formulating skincare products which is why we recommend that you use a scales and that you work in grams because this means that you can be very specific with the amounts that you're using. It's not too important when you come to carry oils because if you add a little bit more or a little bit less, it changes the texture slightly, but that doesn't make too much of a difference in terms of the safety. But if you're looking to add things such as um, vitamin E or essential oils, it is absolutely vital that you know exactly how much essential oil or vitamin E is within that product. Vitamin E because you need to calculate how much you need in order to protect your oils from that rancidity. It's not going to stop them from going rancid completely, but it is going to help slow that down considerably. But when it comes to essential oils, as Therese was explaining earlier, there are dermal limits that you need to look out for. And this is because different oils can cause different sensitivities if they're used incorrectly. So if you use them too much in too high percentages, they can cause some skin issues. 
which is why you need to make sure that you know exactly how much you are using in your product. So really, it just comes down to A, safety, and B, easiness. So it's much easier then to create your oil blends in grams. The only thing you might come across is grams and milliliters are not exactly the same. So you don't have one gram of, say, water might weigh the same as one milliliter of water, but one gram of castor oil is not going to weigh the same or not going to be the same as one milliliter of castor oil because they have different densities. The liquids have different densities. And so you might find that when you come to packaging your oils, even though you have a 50 gram batch, it might not fill a 50 gram milliliter container. So you might have to play around with that slightly. It's not generally too much of a problem, but it comes more when you start making things like body butters or whipped body butters and different things like that. You need to start playing around with that. And if you hear any noises in the background, I apologize, the tractors are going past. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important too as you start blending um other making emulsions or other things where you're working with very um minute quantities of something and it is it's almost impossible to and some of them are powdered so you need to measure um everything out in grams when you stick to all uh doing everything by weight everything converts that way whether it would be a powder a liquid, um, you know, if you get vitamin E, it, it kind of comes out in a blob. When you can put that into weight, you know how much you have and you can much more accurately um, uh, finish your formulation. Yes. Fantastic information there. Another question we've had, can you explain what an occlusive is? I think, Brooke, you were talking about occlusive ingredients within uh, your lip oil formulation. Botanical oils on the whole are emollient ingredients and they are very good at sort of slowing down water loss from the skin. So they are very good sort of your, your skin itself has your skin sebum, which is sort of the bricks and, and mortar on your skin. And they are very good at slowing down that water loss. But an occlusive ingredient also has uh, very good properties as well. So occlusives, to an extent, are essentially like putting a protective cover over the skin. So they are they provide occlusion to the skin, which essentially means that you are covering it over. So with this lip oil in particular that I was talking about, because you have the slightly thicker texture from the castor oil and the cerebellina, it doesn't absorb in as much, which means that it stays on the surface of the skin and provides that occlusivity because you don't have the water then escaping through your skin quite so easily. So they are slightly different to emollients in terms of the way it works but it essentially just means that it is an ingredient that will stay on your skin for longer periods of time and provides you with that slightly more um, long lasting skin feel. So I don't know if you can see zooming in, there's a little bit on there, but it is a thicker texture. So if I pour it upside down, it's not gonna come out, it's not gonna go anywhere because it is a thicker product, which is what we were aiming for because we wanted that little bit extra occlusion without being heavy or then being really thick and sticky. Yes. Just to remind you again, so pre-enrollment is open on the 6th of July. If you are interested in joining our student community, if tonight's webinar has whet your appetite to learn more about formulation, then Formula Botanica is the place for you to be. And the link for you to pre-enroll will be in the comments. So please do join us for when term time opens on the 6th of July. Um, just a really nice one here. Uh, amazing testimonial here from one of our current students. Um, I have been taking both basic and advanced courses at Formula Botanica and love the courses and the Formula Botanica community. So fantastic that you have already joined us and that you are loving our community and what you are learning so far. 
we can't wait to see how you evolve on your journey as you go forward. Lots and lots of questions here. We are going to get through as many as we can. Um, an interesting one here. Um, I'm curious about shelf life and stability in various botanical infused oil. It's a really good question because shelf life and stability is important. So important that we have a whole certificate just on this topic. So it's not something that we can cover absolutely in depth this evening. But could you give a few pointers for uh, summer? Okay. So when you're looking at oils in particular, you're looking more towards the rancidity. So this is what you'll want to be focused on when it comes to your shelf life. So Anna, as Anna was saying earlier, rancid oils are really quite unpleasant to apply to the skin. They don't smell good, they don't feel good, and it's not something you want to go anywhere near. So that is your main priority when it comes to looking at your stability and your shelf life. There are lots of other things that go in around that, but that is your main focus when it comes to the shelf life. And the best way of determining that is through stability testing. There's lots of different stability tests that you can do for this, and it would be a whole other webinar in itself to take you through stability tests. But with infused oils in particular, if you're talking about the macerated oils, this does add a little extra complication to it because you've got that plant matter in there as well. So depending on how you've created the macerated oil will depend a little bit on what you need to look for. But the the most important thing when it comes to oils is looking at that rancidity. And you don't have to uh, create your own macerates. Lots of our students no, and community love that but you can buy macerate so somebody somewhere will have done that work for you if you are nervous about it so if you're concerned about stability initially and you you're not creating your own um, ingredients like that and many of our students wouldn't start making their own ingredients then feel free to experiment with macerates that you can purchase calendula is a very common macerate and john's wort i mean there are a variety for you to experiment with so have lots of fun is all I'm going to say. And let's take a couple more and then we can round this up because we have been on for a while. And thank you to everybody that has stuck with us for, you know, this long. It has been an amazing, amazing uh, webinar. So we are really grateful to all of you for all the questions and interaction. We are having a fantastic time. So where can we research essential oil dermal limits? I am going to say, please do not research this on the internet. Please come to a reputable school because we will teach you how to formulate with essential oils safely. And all of this information about essential oil dermal limits is covered in depth and you have access to our amazing team of tutors when you join us too. It is covered in our diploma in organic skincare formulation, where you get access to a big guide that is called our essential oils dermal limit guide. And throughout your course, we teach you how to calculate dermal limits. And as I said, when you get stuck, which many people do if they're just looking on the internet, you get access to a team of tutors who can answer your questions. So please do, if you're going to really work with essential oils, this is where you need to sign up to study with a reputable school. Have either of you got anything to add to that? No, I would yeah. definitely say that um, looking into learning how to calculate essential oil dermal limits is definitely the place to start. And this is not something you can do really in depth from blogs and places on the internet. It is something you need to learn how to interpret yourself because the information comes from the suppliers of your ingredients. And the key thing is learning how to interpret that. There is all of the dermal limits are set by a, um, I don't know whether you'd call it an institute um, called IFRA. So which essentially means um, the International Fragrance Association. And they do cover in depth all of what dermal limits there are, but it is it's really difficult to interpret directly from their website. So that's why we teach you how to understand these dermal limits. We teach you what they mean. We teach you how to calculate them and we put it into a nice, easy to digest format and something that is much easier to understand. 
I know I went to the IFRA's website before um, I started learning Dermal Limits and you look at it and you go, oh my God, and you never want to touch another essential oil ever again. I and quit. <laughs> you go, I quit. I can't do this. Never mind. And it's sad because essential oils are fascinating ingredients and they can do so much for your skin and there is no need to be afraid of them at all. Yeah. You just need to give them the respect they deserve and understand how to work with them correctly and we cover all of that in our courses we will teach you how to understand the information that if ifra gives you how to understand the information the supplier gives you and how to t determine what you need to do in terms of your product in terms of how you formulate it in terms of how you label it and all these sorts of things it is a lot of information but we cover it in depth in our courses yes the sensitizers also change if or changes what um, <laughs> what needs to be calculated and declared. And the beautiful thing is if you're part of a program like Formula Botanica, um, so you might as well join Formula Botanica, you're going to be kept up to date on that. Um, there are some pretty large, pretty significant mm -hmm. changes coming. And the thing is there are so many sensitizers, not all of them are applicable to our essential oils. So the team helps to pull that information together and make it more manageable for the skincare formulators and keep us up to date on the ever-changing topic of dermal limits. Yes. If you want to keep up to date with what is happening on, in the industry, the Formula Botanica community is the place to be. So absolutely. Um, I'm going to take one final question before we wrap it up for this evening, because it has been a pleasure but I think we are reaching a point where we have got through most of your questions. And somebody has asked, I've been making hair oils for hair growth and scalp and hair benefits. Do you have a specific course on this? So do we teach hair care? Absolutely, we do. So yes, we have we a whole diploma on hair care, creating hair care products. This includes hair growth oils, different um, oil serums for the hair specifically. And then lots of other different kinds of products that you would use for your hair as well. So even styling products such as gels and mousses, texturizing sprays, everything then to your different shampoos, your clarifying shampoos, conditioning shampoos, shampoos bars, conditioner bars. There's so many different products we teach in that diploma. And it is something we would recommend you take if you already have a little bit of formulation knowledge because hair care is a little bit more complicated than skin care. So if you haven't taken a course with us before and you don't have any background in formulation, I would absolutely recommend you take the diploma in skin care first because that is a little bit easier to understand and we walk you through step by step right from the very start how to create different products, how to understand how to blend oils, how to understand how to um, work with lots of different kinds of ingredients, how to preserve your products, how to make sure they are safe, they are stable. And then after that, you can go then on to our diploma in organic hair care formulation and really specialize in hair care products in particular. But if you have more of a background in formulation and you already know a bit about creating your own products, then absolutely go straight in for the hair care. But I will just to caveat that by saying it is a little bit more complicated. So just bear that in mind. Yes, so our Diploma in Organic Skin Care Formulation will really teach you those formulation principles. And then in our Hair Care Diploma, once you understand those formulation design principles, we cover the more specific formulations that are involved in hair care. So hair care is amazing. It's fun, you know, very easy, the same as skincare. It's just slightly a different approach to formulation. So you need some basic skills before you jump into hair care. But, um, you know, you are very welcome to take our Diploma in Organic Skin Care formulation first and then move on to hair care. And lots of our students do, actually. Um, thank you so much to everybody who has joined us this evening. If you have been sitting at home thinking, I can do this, if that is you, then our enrollment period opens on the 6th of July. We are open for one week only and we open all of our individual courses. So all the courses that we talked about earlier, we've talked about the Diploma in Organic Skin Care Formulation, we've talked about the Diploma in Organic Hair Care Formulation. All the courses on our website are available from the 6th of July 
day before my birthday. Um, not that that's anything uh, to do with it, but we, I'll be celebrating anyway. Um, and you can enroll for one week only and you can join our amazing community of tutors, our students, our graduates. You can be inspired. I'm just so excited for all of you that have joined us this evening who want to learn new skills because Formula Botanica really is the place to be for organic formulators. We have been doing this for over 10 years now, and it is an incredible privilege to be able to teach you. As you've seen this evening, Formula Botanica aren't just going to teach you a recipe or a formulation and tell you to follow it. We are going to teach you the principles behind designing your own that really is something that changes students lives doesn't it Therese and Brooke it sure uh, does yeah absolutely I mean it's such a privilege to be able to see our students go through our courses and graduate and then to see the effect it has on their lives and coming out of our courses with these amazing businesses and they've completely altered the, their lives they have made changes to the way they live they have so much happier and it is truly fantastic to watch and such a privilege to be a part of and I know just from my perspective on my, from myself I started with the courses when I was quite young I was 14 when I enrolled for the courses and it absolutely changed the course of my life I am here working for Formula Botanica which is not something I ever imagined I would do when I first started I actually wanted to be a fashion designer when I was a little child for a while but once I realised that cosmetic formulation is actually something I can do, it was so empowering to realise that this is something that I can follow. This is a dream that I can actually succeed at doing. And here I am. So if it is something that you have an interest in, if, if it is something that makes you feel good inside and that you find fun and enjoyable to do, then absolutely come and study with us and come and be a part of our amazing community. Everyone is so welcoming and we cannot wait to have you. Brooke, I think you're the example of it's never too early, and I'm probably the example of it's never too late. <laughs> I've had a few decades on you before I joined. Yes, we all have in common that Formula Botanica has changed our lives, and this yeah. could be you too. So if you are, you know, if you're looking at this and thinking, I want to join you too, now is your moment. Think of where you could be this time next year. You heard Brooke say she started formulating very young. Therese has changed her life slightly later in life, but we've all had our lives change from Formula Botanica and so have our student and graduate community. So this is your time. This is your time to take action. It's your time to take the step towards changing your life and think about where you could be this time next year. Think about the amount that you could have learned in that time and the amount of formulation skills that you could have practiced. I'm just gonna pop this one on screen. I saw it pop past. Uh, I'll get it right in a minute. <laughs> Apologies, the tech isn't working for me tonight. Brooke, you are an inspiration. I want to pull that one up because it is absolutely true. And the whole entire Formula Botanica education team work so, so hard to support all of our students. So thank you so much to everybody who joined this evening. Thank you for the entire team, everybody in the comments, everybody who makes the tech work, everybody who helped us to go live. And thank you very much, Therese and Brooke, for all of your wisdom in this amazing webinar. Thank you so much, everybody. Just a reminder that, you know, we go live with enrollment on the 6th of July. We cannot wait for you all to join us. So I am going to say goodbye for this evening and hopefully see you all soon. Okay, this is the last one now. <laughs> Enrolling was the best oh, decision goodness. I made by Denise. Denise, we absolutely adore having you as part of our student community. What a beautiful comment to end on. So thank you very much, everybody. It is wonderful to have had you join us. We will hopefully see you all again soon. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you for joining us, everyone. Bye.